Hey, this is Zach King with the Final Cut Pro tutorial, and I'm going to be showing you two ways to keyframe photos in Final Cut Pro, the hard way or the better way. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to open up my photo, and I'm going to grab a photo and just drag it into the browser. And this is just a, a beautiful sunrise, that's the title, and it is gorgeous. And I'm going to drag this into my project timeline, and you're going to see what I've got here is I just want to have the effect, you know, a Ken's burn effect, where it kind of just zooms in like so. And so what I can do, and this is kind of painstaking here in Final Cut, so you add a keyframe right here, this is your keyframe button, you, you can also hit Control K, and that'll add a keyframe. You're going to see the wireframe turns green. If you don't have the wireframe, come up and make sure you've got image and wire so you can see and control both. So what we're going to do is that's the first point on my photo. And so as I pull through, I'm going to go about five seconds into it. We're going to add another keyframe. Once again, it turns green. And so that was our starting point. This is going to be our end point. And so I can select this, go to the motion, and we're going to turn up the scale. And then we're going to kind of turn it towards the sun. And so now, it's going to be a zoom in, pan to the right. So there's a cool animation. And you can do all kinds of animations with this. The easier way is using a plugin, a third party plugin. If I go to my effects video generators, I can come down to slick effects generators. And they actually have a photo motion generator it automatically does all the keyframe and it's super easy and one thing I don't like about doing it in Final Cut Pro is that you can't see off the edges and you can't see you know how far of a picture you have left or if you're going over an edge the great thing if you use photo motion you can actually do that so let me show you how you do this so what we're gonna do is go to our controls and then configure and it actually gives us access to iPhoto also I believe aperture can work in here too so I'm gonna actually grab a Mac one. I'm gonna go to nature I love this photo. So this adjusts our scale into the photo. If you go over 100% though, you are going to be getting pixelations here. So their rule of thumb is don't go over 100%. And I agree with that. So I'm going to start with the photo zoomed in. And we're going to kind of pan the mountaintops and while we zoom out. So the great thing is it snaps to edges when we hit an edge. I'm going to start on the right side. And then this is our end point. So you're doing your beginning point here. You're zoomed in. You can even do a tilt and pan. For this example, I'm not going to do one, but 0% is back to normal. You also can adjust your right and left here. I did this manually by grabbing. I like that option. Also, you have a top and bottom, but again, grabbing works. Now, you can open your preview slider here, your navigation window, and this will show you the start point up here in purple and the end point here in green. And so you can also play this. Right now, there is an actual point set. Don't hit cancel. Back to keyframing. So I'm going to set the end point, and we're going to kind of zoom out a little bit more. And we're going to end over here on this left corner. And so that's at 30%. And that's pretty much all I want to do here. I want to show you a few buttons, though. The cool button is they have a reduced flicker button right here. If you have a lot of horizontal lines in your photo, you can hit this button, click that guy. This is also a revert by turning off all your keyframes. This one will actually reverse the motion, so if I wanted the start to be the end and the end to be the start, then I can click this button right here. They also have a bunch of preset animations that I can click through right here and preview. But I'm going to save this and hit OK. And So now, when I drag this down here, you can see we can play through it. and a gorgeous photo with a really nice keyframe. That would have been a lot harder to do in Final Cut and a lot more painstaking because again you can't tell where the edges are that's one of the biggest things for me but also I love the fact that there are preset animations in the software of Photo Motion. So you can check out their website. Those are the two ways that you can do keyframing. Here's their website if you're interested g3.com and they have a Photo Motion here product available. I'll also put a link on my website. Cool thing is you can just add a transition between there. That's not a problem. I'm going to go to get a cross dissolve. And you're going to see here's the photo transitioned right in. So it's cool software. I wanted to show you that. 
But if you are interested in like hand keyframing in Final Cut and you're like set on that, then I have more tutorials for that on my website, FinalCutKing.com. But I do encourage you to check out the Photo Motion software at G3.com. You can download their software, and I believe this Photo Motion software is $99. So you can go check that out. I'm Zach King with FinalCutKing.com. Check out my website, and I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial.